You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sophie and Mount Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Kingsguard, Leandros' Path. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Alright, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. Jake, it's not him I'm worried about. Leandros gave the sword at your side a long glare, likely thinking of ways that he could separate it from you. Oh. That sword, that thing. This. This really isn't some cruel joke you're playing on me, is it? I wish I could say that it was. You said that Jaws got his burn by touching that blade. It wasn't until we both started to fight over it when it glowed red like hot iron. Prior to that, he was just fine holding it. It hasn't done anything since. So, then it didn't burn you? No. And you truly can't throw it away. I know that it sounds crazy, but, but it almost scares me to think about doing that. Even more than it scares me to have it by my side. It's weird, but I feel like this is an extension of me, that losing it is almost like ripping out my nails. If I were to lose it, I... You think you, you think that you may get hurt? Maybe. Though it's more like I'm just too afraid to find out. And even if I were to somehow let it go, I don't know. I, I feel like it would come back to me. That no matter where I go, it will find its way back. And if someone were to take it from you? <clears throat> Please don't. I'm afraid that you might get hurt like Jaws. There must be something that can be done to get rid of it. You lost it when we were shipwrecked, so why is it now that you can't let it go? I never had an issue leaving it behind in my room back at the castle, but it was never for the sole purpose of losing it. Jaws said that he might have cut himself on it. Maybe that is what awakened it. Maybe up until now it was sleeping or something. Are you saying that it might have a mind of its own? I wonder, can it hear us now? And can it see us as well? Should I... should I try asking it? No! Hmm. I mean... No. I worry about what might happen to you. We don't know anything about it. Talking to it might just be as bad as using it. For now, it's best if we keep it sealed, though, all, though we'll need to speak to an expert on the matter. When this war is over, we'll have to see if we can find someone who would know anything about it, or even possibly a way to destroy it. I wonder if there's anyone from Azite who would know about this. That would be a good start. Those, those academics are always nose-deep in tomes of the past. They've likely come across something. Though, what I really want to know is how Marilyn and Esther acquired it and why they gave it to you. What do you mean? A blade like that isn't just found anywhere. I'm sure I told you that the craftsmanship of it wasn't like anything I've ever seen. It's almost hard to believe that they just brought- they just bought it without any knowledge of the dangers it poses. Then why would they give it to you? I don't think anyone would have believed this to be nothing more than a petty- than a pretty blade. <clears throat> I certainly can only hope so. Leandros went back to picking herbs every so often, taking sidelong glances at you, or rather the blade. You didn't know why he said that. It almost sounded as though he doubted Marilyn and Esther, like they gave it to you on purpose. But even they couldn't have known as, as well-traveled as they were. <clears throat> Besides, why would they give you something so dangerous in the first place? He shook the thoughts from your head and went right back on to picking at a, picker, at a quicker pace. <clears throat> All right, I think we have enough. You finished picking a few additional herbs, got up, and brushed yourself off. I do hope this helps. I feel terrible for doing that to him. You did nothing wrong, Jake. I still feel like it's my fault, though. After everything that he did for me, and, and now and he became hurt because of me. Perhaps it was the sword that is, that, but I still feel guilty. You really do believe in him, don't you? And you're still skeptical? It's hard not to be during these trying times, but I suppose I have been rather quick to assume. As I said before, he's not our enemy. I know, after seeing him in that state, I doubt he could hurt a fly. But just like you, but just like you feel guilty, I still worry. I have been trained all my life to protect you, to be wary of strangers that may harm you. You and I still don't know anything about him, yet you run to him as though he were a longtime friend. I must say that like you don't want me to hang around him. No, I'm just saying that. Just be careful. You can never be too careful. Alright, I'll be more careful around strangers. But I really think he's on our side. If he wasn't, do you really think he'd really think I'd still be here? To be honest, I don't know. This island is it's peaceful. It certainly makes one drop their guard. But even so, I'm still not entirely convinced that you are safe. What are you leaning at? <clears throat> Those assassins were persistent, and I can't say with certainty that they won't come out here looking for you. Are you trying to say that Jaws might be an assassin? I'm just trying to say that he could be working for the enemy. 
Leandris, you saw what they tried to do back at the castle, right? If Jaws really was, was one, then why am I still alive? Because killing you wasn't their goal. What? Kashiro and I thought long about that note we found. It was cryptic, but we have reason to believe they wanted you. Alive. Then why did they try to kill me? That I don't know. There was something off about them, though. The way they moved was unnatural. It might have been that the one that attacked you possibly had some kind of grudge against the royal family and diverged from the plan. Okay, but you told me on the ship you spread rumor of my passing. The entire world should know by now with how gossip travels faster than the wind, so why would they continue to go after me? Faking your death isn't all that uncommon of a tactic, but even I don't believe that was enough to keep them at bay. I imagine they are likely searching for your body as we speak. It's a risky move due to, due to the nature of the throne being up for grabs, but if there was a chance that we might throw your pursuers off course, it was a choice we had to make. Can you believe Jaws, who knows of my identity, trailed us all this way? I wish I wasn't so skeptical of Jaws, but he's gotten close to you. Closer than one should be to the king. <clears throat> and how is that a problem? Because you would be otherwise blind to see him as a threat. He was one. Either way, you don't have any proof yet that, yet that he could still be an assassin. No, but as you said, he knows of your identity. When we escaped aboard the ship, your presence was known to only those within a need-to-know basis. Esther and Marilyn were the ones to inform him, which, which is what makes me suspicious. So while the entire world believes in your passing, Jaws is one who knows you yet, you, who knows you yet still live. Do you speak as though, as though you doubt Marilyn and Esther as well? <clears throat> Leandris, they're family! And you are the king with many enemies you are still oblivious of. I wish I could dispel all my fears, but until this war is won and you are home safe, I can't trust everyone so easily. There's no doubt that he already knows of our plans. He? You mean this Gaius guy? Gaius? Where did you hear that from? You and your father mentioned him back at the castle. You must have heard wrong. You and Kashiro were talking about him aboard the ship, and just a few days ago you let his name slip and tried to cover it up. I don't know why you were keeping him a secret from me, but your suspicious behavior surrounding his name has led me to believe that he has a hand in all this. He's nobody you should worry about. Just forget about him and let me deal with it. Leandros was beginning to get riled up again. He was doing his best to keep his claws in, but it was easy to see that the name Gaius was tied to something serious. I know that you still want to keep things from me, but I don't think you... But I don't... But don't you think it would be best to me for me that I know who I'm just who I'm dealing with? I'm sorry. I just don't want you to get involved with him. It'd be better for everyone if he was dealt with and forgotten. <clears throat> but perhaps we'll talk later. Right now isn't the best time. All right, but I'll hold you to that. As soon as you returned to Ayana, she grabbed the herbs from the two of you and quickly retreated back inside her home, leaving you two outside. You got the feeling that she blamed the two of you for his condition. Hopefully Jaws would be able to explain the circumstances when he calmed down. It just went to show you how much she really did care for him. In the following days, waiting for Jaws' recovery, Leandris continued to train you, but this time not so strictly. You were, getting a, you were getting a better feel for what Leandris meant when he said that a sword was meant for killing. Every move you made had to be precise. There was no room for error. And only when you did swing your blade, you were to, you were to perceive it as, it as if it was a killing blow. Oh! Gah! You're lying back, you're lying backside on the beach, spread eagle. Your makeshift blade was kicked away to the side and your arms and legs were sore. Ugh! Jake, if I, was e if I was your enemy, you would have been dead five times over. But you're definitely improving. Your Kingsguard reached down a hand and he took it in tow. I still can't stop that forward strike of yours. Ugh! This way I'll never be able to defend myself. You should be proud of yourself, Jake. Sure, your footwork still needs a little work, but you've got solid form. I don't expect you to be able to block all my attacks. In that scenario, you should be avoiding them. Someone of your size and strength would be able to stop it anyway. You simply need to be more patient. Wait for an opening and strike. I know. Jake, you really have improved. It takes a long time to become more accustomed to fighting, and we have been training for less than a week. What do you say we stop for today? It's getting late now. And besides, and besides tomorrow... Leandro stared out at the ocean and he followed his gaze. Further down the beach was situated a large galleon out at sea, though it looked more akin to a pirate ship than a trading vessel. It had just arrived a few hours ago, and you saw a few men leave and make camp around a makeshift dock. Joss had told you to keep your distance from them, and that they weren't the most, friend the most friendliest of traders. He almost seemed reluctant to see them, and you got some sort of hint that he possibly even knew them, but you heeded his warning. 
Besides, he said he had to get he, he said he had got you both covered for passage aboard the ship, and you trusted his word. So tomorrow we finally leave. Are you ready? Are you already starting to miss this place? Hell no! <laughs> and you don't even think about leaving me behind. Don't even think about leaving me behind now. I won't. I won't. Men further down shouted amongst each other, singing songs of merriment and screaming about a lack of rum or something of the sort. They certainly are a rowdy crew. They almost remind me of... No. What are you thinking? It's nothing. Let's go and wash up and make sure we have everything packed for tomorrow. Jaws did say that they would be leaving quite early and wouldn't wait, if we, wouldn't wait around if we happened to be late. Here we are. The Anders pushed aside a branch, opening a pathway through the jungle and revealing its path. I don't know how you always managed to find the way back here. If it was me leading the way, we'd have gotten lost five times and reached here by dark. You have to learn to take in your surroundings more carefully. It's the same as in combat. If you only focus on your enemy, you'll find yourself in trouble. Sorry for being so oblivious. Ha! Huh. I do have to say, you know the city streets of Havana better than I do. Now let's get washed. I have a pound of sand in my greaves that have been chaf chafing my feet. As you watched Leandris move on ahead, a dastardly thought popped up in your head. Your back was sore from the many times you were stripped up and fell down on the sand during training. Come the morning, you would likely be very sore. Perhaps it was time for him to have a little taste of his own medicine. A harmless prank, if you would. Besides, this was a perfect opportunity. He would be none the wiser. You silently crept up closer to Leandris before he got too far ahead and were ready to pounce. Your heart was beating so heavily you questioned whether he could hear it. Once you were close enough, you reached out your fingers ready to give him just a little push. I can tell what you're thinking, Jake. And it's not going to work on me. Huh? Leandris spun around and countered you, grabbing your arm just as you were about to push him. Ah! You weren't exactly sure what had just happened. One moment you were on dry ground, the next you were underwater. Though your thoughts quickly shifted to how cold the water was. Around this time, the pool should have been lukewarm, but right now it was freezing. You quickly gathered your bearings and swam towards the surface. A deep-seated laughter filled the air upon your arrival to the surface. On the shore, you found your Kingsguard nearly ready to bust a gut. He had such a proud smile on his face, and as you glared back at him, he only started to laugh harder. What are you laughing at? It's f freezing in here. That's what you get for trying to sneak up on a lion. B -b -b but you, you t t tossed me in. Don't do unto others what you don't want done unto yourself, unto thyself. This extends to the common people, knights, kings, guards, nobles, and yes, even kings. Are you truly so surprised by such a golden rule? I can't f feel my t toes. Maybe next time you'll learn your lesson. It was a nice try, though. Suppose I can give you a 7 out of 10 for effort. Now get out of there before you catch something. Jake? I c can't move. Your joints started to grow stiff as you stopped shivering. The painful sting of the cold was replaced with a numb tingle that ran all across your body. Honestly, Jake, another prank? Uh, I am s s serious. Uh, but body's locking up. What do you mean? Jake? Jake, this is not funny. Say something. Jake! My lord, it's freezing! Jake, please answer me. Jake! 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 L and... Rose. Yes, Jake, I'm here. We'll get you out. You'll be okay. Come... Closer. Jake? I got gotcha. you. What? You shook off the cold and with all your strength dipped your hands under the water. How do you like this? Take some of this and this and some of this. <laughs> That's a funny being the wet cat now. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!